deepfakes have been around for a while, namely in academia and Hollywood. By seamlessly transplanting one person's face to another, you can make them say something they never said, or do something they never did, and even resurrect them from the dead. Thanks to fast graphics cards with lots of memory becoming reasonably affordable and free open source software, the power of deepfakes has made its way into the hands of a very dangerous group of people, the public. Bestowed with this gift, this leap in technology filtered down from the powers that be to the masses, what would we do with it? We made porn. Lots and lots of porn. <sighs> they even got Dumbledore. We also made fake political propaganda and many, many memes. Jagger will need to draw me like one of your French girls. You can see how this can be hilarious, but also extremely problematic. Wearing only this. But how easy is it to create a deepfake? Is it just a drag and drop scenario, or do you need a computer science degree to make a meme? Let's take a journey into the world of deepfakes. I want to find out how long it will take to create a reasonably convincing deepfake. Perhaps I could become Elon Musk with his incredibly awkward style of talking. Or maybe I could become 1980s Arnold, where even his face was muscular. muscular. All I know is this is going to require high level problem solving with dire visual consequences. Let's get started. The program I'm going to use is called Deep Face Lab. It's free and open source, and apparently 95% of deepfakes are created using this. So it must have a friendly, intuitive user interface with an exhaustive manual, right? Well, this is what it looks like. Just a bunch of batch files in Windows Explorer with no instruction manual. <sighs> As always, we'll start with the first tutorial on YouTube. All right, I have downloaded Deepface Lab, the program, with its um, very friendly user interface. Now it is time to start figuring out how to use this program. This is day one, hour zero. All right, this is the first tutorial I could find on YouTube. Always a good place to start. It's 17 minutes, 41 seconds long. Let's see how I get on. Whilst I'm figuring that out, let's talk about how all this works anyway. The short answer is, it's complicated, but here's a layman's take on it. Deep Face Lab uses machine learning to learn what someone's face looks like. You feed the program thousands of pictures of the person you are trying to emulate. Different lighting, different angles, different expressions. You're trying to tell the program, this is what Jim Carrey's face looks like in every possible situation. The program trains over hundreds of thousands or even millions of iterations, changing model parameters, attempting to learn that face. It then replaces the original with the learned face, matching the expression and lighting. Note here, it is not simply photoshopping in different pictures on top of the original. It's actually creating a brand new image for every frame based on the model developed by the learning process. And that's pretty cool. Look, there's thousands of photographs of me. So apparently all I do now is leave this running for an hour or two, come back and we should have a result. So I've actually had this running for quite some time now, oh, it's just disappeared. I've stopped the model and now I can hopefully package it up and see a result. The idea here is it's learned Elon's face, it's learned my face, I should replace one with the other one. But I should have a video result. Let's open the result. <laughs> but the, life cannot just be about solving one miserable problem after another. Can't, that can't be the only thing. There need to be, there need to be things that inspire you. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, um, I think there's a bit more to this than uh, just watching a YouTube tutorial. Let's go deeper. In an attempt to improve this monstrosity, I thought I'd just leave it running. 
Machine learning improves using an iterative process, so longer is better. From what I've read online, even using super fast GPUs, convincing deepfake models can take hundreds of hours of training. So I just left it. I left this model running overnight and I've just merged the frames together. Let's have a look at the result. Maybe this will be better. But the, life cannot just be about solving one miserable problem after another. Can't, that can't be the only thing. There need to be, there need to be things that inspire you. Oh, <laughs> did you see that bit there? His eye was like... Inspire you. Oh dear. So it seems like it's fixed the face like coming out of the head problem, but it's so blurry. That's what- I mean, it's better. Oh, we did this. Uh, but it is not convincing at all. Another strategy required. I thought perhaps Elon Musk is just too different to me. His skin's paler than mine, his face is a totally different shape. Maybe if I tried a different face as the destination, I'd have more luck. Someone with my olive complexion who could match my jaw-dropping good looks. Someone like Johnny Depp. Seriously, how can someone be that handsome? I got the model up and running and left it overnight. All right, it's the next day. I've left that running for approximately 12 hours. I have a good feeling about this one. I've ruined Johnny Depp's face. <laughs> it looks like some sort of weird <laughs> lizard man. And to top it all off, there's no audio, so garbage. I tried a number of different things to improve my deep fix. What about some 4K footage with some nice lighting? For our first trick, we'll be trying to connect a couple of Thunderbolt 3 devices to our USB 4 laptop. And the reason this matters is because How about a shot that's dead straight on, so no profiles? I mean, it's, it's better. It's just not as good as that. Not even close. I tried everything I could from YouTube tutorials and guides online, and everything I made sucked. Slow ahead. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. You're gonna need a bigger boat. I know Kung Fu. Show me. You shall not pass! Look at the mask of my boy. <laughs> Some, sometimes it just doesn't work. <laughs> After scouring forums and reading this huge guide, I finally stumbled across something. Pre-training. You see, when you start training a model, at first it doesn't even know what a face is. It's a newborn baby, with lots of potential, but right now, it's as thick as mints. Its first guess, or iteration, is a blurry nothing. It has to learn how smiles work, where the eyes are supposed to be, how faces turn, shadows, beards, blinking, all from scratch. That's a lot. Imagine trying to paint someone's portrait if you've never even seen a human face before. However, if you can show the model what human faces look like in general before you ask it to copy one for itself, it will have a much better chance of getting things right. This is called pre-training. Instead of feeding the model thousands of photos of just one face, you give the model 50,000 different faces to look at. Varying expressions, lighting, skin tones and ages. You take the model's hand and say, welcome to the world, this is what humans look like. This process can take a long time. The model is still just a baby at this stage, experiencing its world for the first time. After almost a week straight of doing this, the model is now a confident, educated teenager. 
Now when you tell it to look at my expression and replace my face with Arnold's, it can use everything it learned growing up to learn Arnold's unique features. Focusing now on just that one source, the adolescent model matures into adulthood and can actually start matching expressions, skin texture, teeth, eyes, shadows. It was using this method of pre-training that I got my first decent deepfake. All right, finally, we are getting somewhere because this is not too bad. Look, that is reasonable. Like it looks like he's kind of skimped on his diet and uh, not worked out in 10 years. This is the first time I've actually felt like I've learned something here. With all that said, let's keep going. With something to work with, it was time to hone this skill. I spent, and I really mean this, hours reading this guide. I think I've read it top to bottom 10 times. There's a lot to this. Blending, masking, source face manipulation, different training methods. Gradually, I learned the quirks of the Deep Face Lab program and things started to look better. Well, this process is incredibly tedious, but apparently it makes a difference. Most important thing I've learned is garbage in, garbage out. If you feed the program crappy source images, then the result can only be crap. While, namely in academia and Hollywood, by seamlessly transplanting one person's face to another, you can make them say something they never said or do something they never did. However, lots of stuff still sucked. Sometimes it just doesn't work. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to say please. All right, I am ready to present my magnum opus. All right, so I had to draw a line in the sand here. Otherwise I would just keep making these forever. Initially I thought I would learn how to do this for 10 hours and then present my results, but I sailed past 10 hours and had nothing good to show for it. Then 20, 30, 40, 50, I just kept making these. But I had to stop eventually, so I drew the line at 100 hours of trying to learn how to make deep fakes. So I spread that over about 30 days and whatever you're away to see is the result of that. Now I had three PCs and a laptop running pretty much 24 seven during these 30 days. So it's likely thousands of hours of compute time required to make these. And my results are nowhere near as good as a YouTube channel like Control Shift Face. There's a skill to this. It's a blend of science and art. And I got okay at it, but there are masters of this craft out there. Anyway, here's my best effort. Here's a montage of me living another life as a movie star. Enjoy. This is Sparta! I see dead people. See who's behind the mask. I can look into your eyes as you die. Peace. It can't be. Good army. <laughs> and from now on. It's gonna be nothing but short, short skirts around the house. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. Truth is, I am Iron Man. We ever dared you. Now I want to dance, I want to win, I want that trophy. If you enjoyed this video, then you might be the kind of person who is interested in a career in tech. If so, I want to introduce you to this week's sponsor, Boolean.
Boolean is an online tech academy focused on preparing you for the industry. Their full and part-time courses consist of live lessons taught by industry professionals with hands-on, job-focused projects ranging from software development to data analytics. You don't need any prior coding knowledge, Boolean will get you from zero to industry proficient in six months. This is not just a bunch of tutorials, this is live lessons focused on bringing you up to an industry standard. And once you've graduated, they offer six months of career support. They also have a financing option where you can pay for the course once you are earning. Boolean understands six months is a big commitment, so they're offering you a free coding week. It's a five day event with four days of live lessons so you can start learning how to code and build web apps from scratch. This will let you see how Boolean teaches and trains you and find out if it's the right fit for you before you sign up for the six month course. So if this is something you've been thinking about doing this year and want to move into the profession, then Boolean's free online event could be the ideal first step. It starts January 2023 on the 16th and it's free. The link to sign up is in the description below. Thank you very much to Boolean for supporting the show and thanks to you for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Peace.